Let's talk about folic acid. Okay. And we can tie it back to cyanocobalamin because these are everywhere, man. Yeah. And I love that you brought this up on Rogan yep. and, and brought attention to this. And you get I think, a lot of heat about that too. I don't understand you know. that. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. It, well, well, cyanocobalamin is is hydrogen cyanide based between. Right. Right. And so, cyanide is toxic to the mitochondria. Yeah. And 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 look, if you don't believe me, you can go right to right to the National Library of Medicine at the National Institute of Health. You can put cyanocobalamin in there. You can scroll down to section five point three. It will say um, um, component compounds, and it right. will tell you right there. Cobalt. Well, cobalt is the cobalt metal that becomes cobalamin when you put it in the body. It's the the the, the part of the B12. A lot of people don't know that B12 is a metal, um, like zinc, like magnesium. It's a necessary light metal, and then they bind it to something called hydrogen cyanide. And um, and when I really went down the rabbit hole of this, um, again, I'm back to the dosage determines the poison. Yes, you can take small amounts of, of cyanocobalamin, you will not have a toxic reaction, but you know, cyanocobalamin is in our energy drinks. It's, it's in our protein powders. This is such an important concept. Cumulative dose toxicity. And so, and guess what the body does with cyanocobalamin? Converts it into hydroxycobalamin. So why not just give the body hydroxycobalamin? You're talking about a marginal increase in the cost of your supplements. And, I'm, and when I mean marginal, I mean a few dollars a month to buy a supplement that doesn't have folic acid, that has methylfolate, supplement that doesn't have cyanocobalamin, that has a methylated cobalamin in it. Um, and definitely don't have to buy them for me. Methylated multi, there's a lot of great manufacturers that make methylated multivitamins. It's not a huge expense. And, and now you're giving your body, you're giving it to the your body in form that it can absorb and use, utilize. So think about what happens when we break the cobalt metal off, the, the cobalamin off. And now I have a floating hydrogen cyanide molecule. And, and the question is, where do we get the hydrogen cyanide? Like how do we, you know, we get the cobalt metal, we get the hydrogen cyanide, we stitch these things together, but where, where, does, the, where does the hydrogen cyanide come from? Well, it's another industrial waste product. Only this is the industrial waste product from the processing of human sewage. And so in the processing of human sewage, you have a byproduct called sludge, which is the yellowy. <laughs> I don't suggest you go to a human sewage treatment plant. We'll put some if, B-roll in the podcast. You, you ever find <laughs> yourself at one? Um, you'll see hydrogen cyanide. It's the frothy, bubbly, yellowy stuff that they scrape off. It's, so now if it's the waste from the treatment of human sewage, that's got to be like the bottom of the barrel, right? And then we, some, some you know, scientist was like, you know what, if we take that, Bind it to the cobalt metal. We can make cyanocobalamin. We can make it's cheap. I, I, you know, I'm using another um, industry's waste as my raw material, and bang, you've got your same thing with you know fluorosilicic acid becoming fluoride, and and so you know, figuring a way out of things by putting it back into human beings to me is like just <laughs> mind mind numbing. We've become the ultimate landfill. Yeah, give it yeah. back to humans, and, and it's sad because the average consumer doesn't doesn't have the wherewithal to evaluate these things. You know, they go down a cereal aisle and you're like, well, this is fortified or enriched. So if I'm if I'm a mom or dad and you know, I've got young kids and I'm like, well, this cereal is not fortified or enriched, but this one is. So now I'm taking a, an already bad product and I'm making it extra bad because now it's sprayed with the chemical folic acid. But because it's fortified or enriched, I think, oh, I'm going to, oh, this has extra B12 in it. Man, that's cyanide based B12. Um, so, you know, learning how to become a little bit of a citizen scientist, you know, to be all the way to a woke biohacker, right? But a little bit of a citizen scientist and understanding that the closer that we get to the basics, the healthier we become. Grounding, sunlight, breath work, cold showers, clean water, whole foods, you know, the, the, the healthier we become. Forms of nutrients that are actually found in nature. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Cyanocobalamin, not found in nature. No, not found in nature. Folic acid. Mention, talk about folic acid for a moment because this is a big one. Yes. And I just want to point out to people, like, read the labels on mm -hmm. what you're doing because chances are you or someone in your family is taking a multivitamin that contains folic acid and cyanocobalamin, or mm -hmm. you drink an energy drink that has both of those. These occur together, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If, you know, your B12 supplement is likely cyanocobalamin. Mm -hmm. Uh, your folic acid, it's cheap. yep. Your folate is likely folic acid. So you don't want cyanocobalamin, which means your energy drink, your cereal that's fortified, your supplements, your multivitamin, these all have these things. So folic acid. Yeah. So folic acid, you know, it, it, and, and it was even hard when I was, when I was designing my multivitamin, I wanted all methylated nutrients. Right, so right. I didn't want folic acid. I wanted the methyl, mm -hmm. methylate, um, five methylfolate. Um, certainly didn't want cyanocobalamin. I went the methyl form of, of uh, B12 or the hydroxy or denosyl cobalamin form. 
even my supplement manufacturers like, why do you want to do that? And, you know, I mean, I can, I can get you plant sterols. I can get, I can get cyanocobalamin. It's dirt cheap. It's damn near free. You know, we can do the folic acid for a quarter of the price. And I'm like, it's not about the price. It's about the impact. It's about the bioavailability. And it's also about, um, you know, helping people eliminate cellular waste. And they were like, um, not really I'm sure what you're talking about. It's B12. <laughs> um, but folic acid is, remember, folic acid is, is a man-made compound, right? Folic acid does not occur anywhere naturally in nature. You can't find folic acid on the surface of the earth. Um, folate occurs naturally in nature. Folic acid doesn't. And we, um, you know, we, in 1993-ish, right around 1993, I believe it was Monsanto that convinced the federal government that we needed to spray our entire grain supply um, all white flour, all white rice, all white bread, all white pasta, um, and grains of any kind with the chemical folic acid. And instead of saying sprayed with folic acid, they call it fortified or enriched. And that sounds great. You know, again, like it's, this is fortified, it's enriched. And you look at the incidence of attention deficit disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, impulse, impulse control disorders. Um, you look at the um, level of um, ADD and ADHD and irritability. Again, has there been a double-blind placebo-controlled clinical trial to, to prove this causal link? No, but you can use massive data analysis to see that when we introduced some of these things to the food supply, we had a parabolic rise in these conditions. And it's not detrimental to say, all right, I'm gonna take a week off and I'm, I'm gonna give my kids a week off from folic acid because what's the standard American diet? Um, what do I give my kid before they go to school in the morning? I'm give them a white bagel, I'll give them a Pop-Tart, I give them a bowl of cereal that's fortified or enriched. I give them a Flintstone vitamin with cyanocobalamin and folic acid. And then I, then I noticed that 30 minutes after I give this to my kid, it's a full contact sport to get him in the car to go to school. And then the calls are coming home and the teacher's like, hey, Johnny's not paying attention. He's disruptive. He doesn't follow directions. He doesn't complete assignments. He's very impulsive. Maybe we should bring in the Ritalin to kind of help solve this. And We've got a pill for this. And, 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 and what's amazing to me is that we're perfectly willing to break an operating system that has nothing wrong to fix the system that is broken. So- you know, like when, when kids' minds are very, very active, attention deficit disorder or, or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, you know, the conventional wisdom is, okay, well, if the mind's racing, um, let's put an amphetamine into the body and let's race the central nervous system to match the pace of the mind. So let's take the system that's not broken, it's working fine, let's break that one so that it can match the other one that's broken it's, it's, I mean, it's literally like, I heard somebody say, it's like, you know, getting a flat tire and then getting out of your car and slashing your other three tires to Makes create sense. equilibrium. Makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah, no, they're all, <laughs> Let's do it, bro. It's like, well, I just created equilibrium, but now I got four problems and not one. And, and, you know, we saw this in the mortality space too, you know, the, the incidence of, you know, um, like for example, people would have chronic anemias and, you know, the, the, the traditional treatment for anemia, and we, I would see this in the medical record, is, you know, iron, um, B12, and folic acid. So that's the traditional treatment. They're throwing folic acid, cyanocobalamin, <laughs> and iron into these people constantly, constantly. And you see it in the medical record. You know, um, there's even a prescription strength of all of these. So you would see that the doc would switch it to the prescription strength. And now later in the medical record, you see they start to report that they're having bouts of anxiety. They're actually having bouts of heart palpitations. They're having um, um, severe issues with sleep. And that's when they bring in the trazodone or the clonopin or the zolpidum nitrate, diazepam. So like, oh, we have something for the sleep. And and if you actually, we, we because we were in the mortality space, we would trace this, we would try to trace it back to the root cause. And we would say, what is the chance that this person will fix their anemia? And when they had chronic anemia, um, you know, we began to understand that many of these folks had this genetic break called MTHFR, which is a very common gene break. And they had an issue processing folic acid. Um, if you switch them to methylfolate and methylcobalamin and like an iron bisglycinate, the anemia would fix itself. And now anemia is one of those things, you know, this is, normally defined as low red blood cell count, low hemoglobin, but but you can have anemia hiding in plain sight, right? Mm -hmm. When you look at CBC and you and, and you measure the red blood cell count, which goes from about what, 360 to about 580 and, and, and the hemoglobin, which is kind of like the fluid inside the, the red blood cell. I know you know this, but um, for people that don't, you, you know, there's a range of red blood cell. There's a range of hemoglobin. So you can be in the lower 10 percentile for red blood cells and your doctor's gonna say, you're, you're, you're fine. You can be in the lower... 
10 percentile for hemoglobin. The doctor's going to say, you're fine. Your blood's you know, really thin. Your hematocrit's really, really low. And so what, what's happening is your body is, is poorly transporting oxygen. And the more poorly we transport and deliver oxygen, the sicker, the faster and the sicker we become. Anemia is one of those things, low red blood cell count, low oxygen levels, one of those things that exacerbated nearly every form of disease that we studied. So if we added anemia as a comorbidity factor, we would accelerate the onset of and severity of nearly every condition that you had, obesity, type 2 diabetes, um, early onset dementia, Alzheimer's, um, Parkinson's, just the the the, the pace of, of progression. And, and yet a lot of these things were so easily fixable, right? It's fixable so with diet. 